There are a few racing series where you don't have to meet the rules as long as you can demonstrate with engineering data that your structure is equivalent in strength to the structure required by the rules. But land speed racing does not employ a bunch of engineers to check that I did my math correctly, so they just say things like no aluminum rod ends. Of course, I could make or buy an aluminum rod end that would be strong enough. I could swap out this rod end with an aluminum one that has a radial load capacity of 4,000 pounds, and if this rod end ever sees 4,000 pounds, something really bad has already happened. People like to complain about plastic gears and power tools, but there's really no reason that a plastic gear can't last the life of the tool as long as it's engineered correctly or more accurately, as long as the finance department doesn't show up and demand a 25% reduction in cost, forcing the engineer to replace the metal gears with the plastic ones. Anyway, I'm rambling. The point is, it's harder to make a steel rod end that is weaker than an aluminum rod end, so they just put a rule in that says everybody has to use steel rod ends, and they have a pretty good chance of making sure that they all stay in one piece. But, just in case they don't stay in one piece, they also require a washer to be put on all rod ends, so if it does come in two pieces, the important part stays roughly where it's supposed to. This rod end here is actually rated for a thrust load of 2,000 pounds, and if it ever sees a thrust load of 2,000 pounds, then, well... The rules are not really there to ensure that you have a safe design. They're there to make it kind of hard to have a bad design. They're also there so that the safety inspectors don't have to have a master's degree in engineering and don't have to take your word on what the thrust rating for your rod ends are. This is all to say that while the rules will help you make a minimally safe design, you still kind of need to know what you're doing. And while I have some pieces of paper that tell me I know what I'm doing, I also know some people who have those pieces of paper who are kind of dumb. So I'm going to approach this whole thing with a little bit of humility and some math. In most racing series, there are lots of rules on materials, shapes, and technology that result in all the cars kind of being the same. This mostly is an effort to reduce the cost and increase competitiveness, which makes for more interesting racing, but less interesting cars. Land speed racing doesn't have too many rules on body shapes or technology. There are classes that require stock body panels, or sometimes only a few stock panels, resulting in some really unique cars. This makes for an interesting design challenge, especially in the special construction categories like streamliners. The only rules I have to pass are safety related, just a few pages of things I have to have on my car so that I don't die. When you enter an event, you have to pass technical inspection, and the entry form has a list of stuff on the back that is thoroughly checked by an inspector. If you have a new vehicle and your class record is over 200, there are two inspectors, and if you're going over 250, you get three inspectors. So let's go down the list and see what we still need to do. First thing, the vehicle and driver must be present in race-ready condition. Okay, we're not quite there yet, but we'll get there. The rest of this stuff is all equipment. The push vehicle needs a fire extinguisher and a CB radio. Check. The driver needs a helmet, arm restraints, head and neck restraints, a fire suit, a head sock, gloves, and shoes, all meeting the appropriate SFI requirements for not burning. I'm good on all of those. That was an easy design. I just had to spend a lot of money. The next section is all about the driver compartment, the cockpit. I have to have a chassis number sticker. This is like the VIN number, and I know you're already typing in the comments to tell me that VIN number is redundant, but I think we should stick with VIN number. VIN is too short. It's confusing. Did you say fin? Bin? No, I said VIN. What? VIN number. Oh, of course, VIN number. Why didn't you just say that? Anyway, I picked up my VIN number at the last event, so we're good there. Next section, roll cage. I have one of those. 1 in 5 8 095 chromoly tubing in roughly the same shape as shown in the rule book. Check. Headrest padding, check. Seat securely mounted, sure. Seat belt harness, well, I have one of those and I have the tabs to install it, but that needs to be welded in, so half check? I did get all suited up to mark the locations of the tabs for the harness. I do fit in the car snugly, which is perfect. I might move the steering slightly farther away from me, but I think I'll drive it first. I also need to add a dead pedal because my legs are just kind of barely not long enough to touch the end of the cockpit and it feels a little weird with them just dangling there. I designed the frame to wrap pretty close to my helmet with just a tiny bit of clearance, but it actually has more clearance than I was planning. This isn't too bad, but it does increase my frontal area, which will limit my top speed slightly, though I suppose better too big than too small. Once I get the seat belts in, I can do an egress to see how long it will take me to get out of the car while I'm fully strapped in. I didn't see what the minimum egress time is for tech inspection, but half of the people at these events are twice my age, and they'll probably take half a minute to get out of a regular car, so I'm guessing I'll be better than average. 
The driver needs to be able to access the fire suppression, the fuel shutoff, the ignition, and the parachute release. Check. Kind of. Steering wheel clearance. Well, that's definitely going to have to change, and not just because I don't have a steering wheel. However, this is a perfect opportunity for an unnecessary build montage. Check. Reverse gear lockout. I don't have reverse, so that is permanently locked out. Throttle toe strap, positive lock. Well, I don't have a throttle pedal, so there's no toe strap. But I did get a throttle with two cables, so I can roll it forward to close the throttle, just like a toe strap would be used to pull the pedal back, so I'm guessing this is adequate. I also have a positive stop on my throttle body, even though my throttle body is just kind of, uh, here. Brake operation. This has to be inside the crash structure and easy to operate, which it is. Check. The next section has to do with inner paneling. You have to have the panels on the inside of the frame structure securely fastened. I have that. There are a few cars with welded steel plates flush with the outside of the crash structure. The paneling is not inside the tubes here, but it is inside the welded plates. This is apparently adequate, which makes sense because, you know. Fuel lines need to be outside of the driver compartment. Check. The driver needs a vent for fresh air. I'm currently without a body, so we'll call that a check. Every car needs a fire suppression system of at least 10 pounds. Cars with class records above 200 miles per hour need at least 11 pounds. I just got two 10 pound fire systems. The bottles need to be securely mounted. I have this bar on the floor here to support them and they will be securely mounted to the firewall using the mounts that came with the bottle. I got my fire suppression system from ESS. I like this system. It uses a foam spray that you mix with some water and install in the bottle yourself. It has this CO2 canister stuck on the side. When you pull the cable, it punctures this CO2, pressurizes the bottle, and sprays the foam out through the nozzles. These cost about 500 bucks each, but the refill is 50 bucks each, and you can do it yourself. Apparently the foam is relatively easy to clean off as well. This is all good because accidental discharges are not uncommon. I'll need to have at least one nozzle in the driver compartment and at least two pointing at the engine header and oil pan. I'll also need a biannual inspection stickers attached to each bottle, so I'll need to find someone around here to do that. So check on most of these. Remember that fuel cutoff switch? Well, I have to demonstrate that it actually does shut off the fuel pump, so I'll need to wire it in and install a fuel pump. Partial check. The throttle needs two return springs. It has one, so I'll have to add another one in line back to the intake. Fuel lines and coolant lines need metal clamps. We'll go with another half check there since I don't have any fuel lines yet. Metal firewall. This goes between the driver and the engine compartment, and it's supposed to be fully sealed, but since I don't currently have a body, and since it seems imprudent to have a plane extending to infinity, I'm going to call this a check. I had this laser cut to shape by you-know-who, Send Cut Send. By the way, if you want a 15% discount on Send Cut Send, use the code in the description. The bottom half of this will be welded to the frame. It's made of steel because I need it to hold the fire bottle securely. The top is aluminum and will be bolted in. I made these little slots up here for these triangulation bars. I'll need to get some fireproof sealant to fill all the gaps. Exhaust header is pointed away from the course and braced. Check. I don't have a blower or nitrous, so check, check. All right, halfway there. Flywheel shield. Well, I don't have a flywheel, but the motorcycle classes do require a chain guard, so I made one that meets those rules. I do have to protect this brake line from chain failure, but I can do that by running it through a tube. I don't have a planetary transmission or a drive shaft, so I don't need a shield or a sling. And while I don't have a flywheel, I have made sure that all my fuel lines, tanks, and bottles are not in the plane of the chain. Tires, land speed tires, wheels, specifically made for racing, half inch wheel studs, metal valve stems, metal caps, check, check, check. 
No wheel covers, check. Steering securely mounted and steering stops. All my insane steering is securely mounted and I do have steering stops. All my rod ends have washers. Remember that bit? Lots of rod ends, lots of washers. Shock absorbers for each sprung wheel. I have four wheels and four shocks, so check. No traction bars, check. My fuel and water tanks are both securely mounted and vented. The front water tank is held into this cage and the only thing that's gonna change that is removing these six bolts or the fuel tank is bolted in with the straps that came with it. The water tank uses this copper tubing for venting. If I'm upside down, then the outlet is still on the top, but if the car is on its side, it could leak out, so I might want to add a check valve here. The fuel tank has a check valve in the vent that will close if any fuel tries to leave, so I'm good there. Check valve check. Battery securely mounted. Uh, not yet, but soon. Quarter check. No C-clips on my axles. Check. Parachutes. I'll need one of these, but for some reason I have three. They're all kind of, uh not installed half check tow hook mounted and labeled check body all right so i don't currently have a body which means i only need to meet a few of these requirements too i think one is the car number and class needs to be visible so i'll need to make a panel and buy some stickers i don't have any of that yet so one eighth of a check the other is the battery disconnect switch operable and clearly marked there's no battery to disconnect but it is there and marked so three quarters of a check I also did a few things that are not in the rules that I thought were good ideas. I talked about a couple of these. I have more fire suppression than I need, mostly because it costs about the same, but mostly because I don't like being on fire. I added that chain guard, which isn't going to do a whole lot since there's a frame rail right above it, but maybe it keeps the chain failure from interfering with the tire, which would be a bad thing. I also have triple redundant steering stops. The handlebars have stops. Each wheel has a forward and back stop. And with my limited steering, if I do have a total steering failure, the wheels are only going to be able to move a few degrees. So that's it. Mostly checks, some fractional checks, but we're close. I give it a B plus with area for improvement. What will I build next? I don't know. I do know actually it's right in there, but if you want to find out, hit that subscribe button and follow along. Be sure to like and share and all that other stuff. And I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.